Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of short clips about unsolved riddles in physics and today we are talking about the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen experiment. What does that mean? We are talking about spin and as mentioned in another video, spin is already a big riddle. This mysterious doubling of states uh, in three dimensions. So a spin of an electron uh, if you ask the electron by applying a magnetic field, can either point upwards or downwards, okay? So there is no other possibility, already this is strange. And uh, another strange thing is that uh, we have randomness in nature. That means uh, if you have an electron, it can either be spin up or spin down. And there's no way to determine it beforehand. This was the state of art in quantum mechanics in the 1930s. And uh, if you have now uh, two electrons in what you call an entangled state, like uh, two electrons in the 1s orbital of, of an atom, but uh, they have a peculiar property in the sense that if one points upwards, the other one must point downwards. Okay? There's no way pointing. Uh, both upwards or both downwards. If this is up, the other one is down and you just can switch like this, okay? And uh, now you can, what you can do is separate these uh, two electrons and still maintain in, in this what is called entangled state and they still have the property if one is pointing down, the other is pointing up and vice versa, okay? So this was, at the time, the Gedanken experiment, the thought experiment by Einstein. And he said, okay, if this is random and this is random, how could they communicate? Okay, if I measure a random state here and if the answer is, say, upwards, at the same instant, the other one knows that it has to point downwards. How is the information propagating? It cannot exceed the speed of light. This is a contradiction. Okay? It's very strange. This is up at the same time this is down. If it's down at the same time, it's up. Huh? And uh, so you could suspect there is a superluminal motion or, or not, or people were calling this behavior non-locality, okay? If they would be indeed correlated like this. And uh, at the time, it, it does, did not seem possible to test it. However, later, Bell developed a modified system of equations and eventually in 1980 Alan Aspect was able to perform this experiment and the answer was yes. It's like this. Nature is crazy and uh, the information somehow propagates and uh, we, we have this correlation even if superluminal motion is not possible. And that's very, very strange and it destroys our, our imagination of um, three-dimensional space. Everything is, is uh, screwed up. Um, it's not, it's not uh, in my opinion, it's, it's not a harmless uh, result like, oh, it's non-locality, nature is non-local. It means, no, you're wrong about reality. You're wrong about three-dimensional space and uh, objects rotating here. That's what's the message. And uh, in fact, Paul Dirac famously said, uh, Einstein proved uh, uh, it's all wrong, we have to start over. And uh, I think this is one of the many hints that there is something wrong with, with our perception of three-dimensional reality. And spin is a very interesting manifestation of this. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental questions, subscribe to this channel.